All right, so take a look at this snake. This is my male bamboo, one of my hatchlings from last year. Look at what a stunner that snake is, beautiful. And if you're interested in buying a snake, most people that breed snakes actually ship them. And as a matter of fact, I don't actually ship my snakes, but you're probably wondering, how did you get all those snakes in your snake room to start breeding? Let me tell you, I had them all shipped in through the internet. I bought almost all of them through Morph Market. And today I wanna to talk about how to ship ball pythons and it's it's pretty addictive because you know you get online and you see a snake and within 24 hours you can have that snake in your hand I'd say that is one of the advantages of shipping snakes through the mail and spe speaking of shipping them through the mail there's only one place that I know of that you can actually ship a ball python and that is through FedEx the post office won't ship them. They actually used to ship them on planes a long time ago and you could get a snake on a plane <laughs> and now they don't, I don't think they ship on planes anymore. I think mostly it is only through FedEx and it has to be overnight delivery to get a snake. And as a matter of fact, you could get a small snake like this all the way up to an extremely large ball python. I had some of my largest ball pythons, about 5,000 grams a piece, actually got on there and ordered two of them at the same time and it came in a really big box. And you can get any size snake, any kind of snake pretty much through shipping. And in this video, I wanna go through kind of the pros and cons of shipping snakes. And probably the biggest pro is it's really addictive. You can get on the internet and you find a snake and within 24 hours, you actually have that snake in your hand. And what I wanna do in addition to going through the pros and cons is I wanna show you all of my boxes. I actually saved all of my shipping boxes. I have a huge stack of shipping boxes from all the different places that ship me snakes. And I thought, you know, if, if I'm ever gonna sell a snake, it'd be nice to reuse the box. And I decided only to sell at local reptile shows partly because I think the demand is so high and I just don't have the volume of snakes to really ship out the snakes. There's a lot of people that want to buy my snakes. And really, I, and if I sold all my snakes online, which I probably could do, if, if I put them all in Morph Market, I can almost guarantee that within a couple weeks I'd sell all my snakes. They go really fast. The problem is, is I don't really have anything for the local reptile shows. And really, I want to be a big proponent of driving traffic to my local reptile shows here in Colorado. And that's kind of one of the ways I do it, is I only sell snakes at local reptile shows. And the other thing as far as shipping snakes, I would say you really have to be careful as far as the temperatures that you're shipping and the temperatures receiving and everything in between. So for example, if you're shipping from California all the way to New York, you have to take into consideration the temperatures on the, t on the California side and the temperatures all the way on the New York side and everything in between. So if you have like a big storm in the middle that could potentially hold up your shipment, I would definitely not ship a snake during that time. And one of, one of the reasons I really don't ship snakes is because I had a really bad experience shipping snakes. And I, I found a guy on, uh, I think it was either Craigslist or kingsnake.com. He had a large adult Woma ball python and he didn't know anything about shipping snakes. And at the time I didn't really know anything and he put it in a box didn't have enough padding and he shipped it to my door. And let me tell you, that snake got super beat up in the mail. And when I got that snake, it was extremely aggressive. It was the most aggressive snake that I've ever seen. I took him out of the, the container and the, the whole snake, you know, within, I'd say within a month, you could see all the, the kind of the bruises developing all over the snake. He was really beat up. He didn't eat for like seven months. It was really traumatic for the snake. And he finally started eating and I finally gained some trust in that snake. As a matter of fact, I put him in a glass aquarium with a little hide at first. And every time I come into, into my reptile room here, he would strike at me from across the room and he would hit that glass so hard, I thought he was gonna break the glass aquarium. It was pretty frightening, let me tell you. <laughs> That's when I was first starting out in snakes and I was like, what in the world have I got into with these crazy snakes? 
It almost made me get out of snakes, just that one Woma Python. And then the funny thing is, is I moved him from the glass aquarium over into these ARS racks with the gray tubs, and he became one of the sweetest snakes. <laughs> and I still didn't trust him because of kind of the history we had together, so I wouldn't put him by my face, wouldn't wrap him around my neck. I was kind of always keeping my distance from that snake. But he became a really nice snake, and I eventually decided I didn't want to uh, breed and sell Australian Woma pythons, so I eventually sold them to another guy that had a female, mine was a male, and sure enough, the very first year he got eggs. That was pretty cool. And I'm pretty much sticking with ball pythons as far as breeding. Last year I had about 100 hatchlings, and I didn't ship any of them through the mail. As a matter of fact, I made an account on Morph Market, even paid, I think it was like $25 annual fee and decided uh, after I started hatching some snakes, went to my first show and just started selling snakes like crazy. I was like, I am only going to sell at local shows because if I sell in Morph Market, I'm not going to have any more snakes for the following shows. That's probably one of the biggest drivers. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you my huge stack of all of my shipping boxes from all these snakes. And I want to kind of open up each one, show you the different sizes, and kind of go through the packing material that each person uses as far as shipping the all snakes. Right, so take a look at this. This is all my boxes from all the different snakes that I've gotten. Big boxes, small boxes, and a big box for a big snake, small box for a small snake. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda throw them on the table here and show you the insides of each one of these boxes. Okay, so pretty much universal for all of these boxes. It's required by federal law that you put live, harmless reptiles. And what you're supposed to do is put ball python and then uh, the, the scientific name for ball pythons. That's the way you're supposed to do it. And inside, you really want a styrofoam enclosed uh, box. And a lot of people, like Justin, they'll include a nice fancy little flyer and they'll tell you exactly what this one, this was my fire pied. Uh, actually paid $800 for my fire pied. It's really nice, they put a little uh, invoice, they put a little thank you, and handwritten from JKR, that's a really nice touch. And really, um, most people will put the, the snakes directly in a snake bag, and it looks like Justin actually put this in a little deli cup. Let me show you that snake, actually. <laughs> Let me pull that snake. Uh, this is... Take a look at this. This is <laughs> this is actually how big Justin's snake got. And look, he used to, he gave it to me in this little tiny deli cup. It has definitely gotten a lot bigger, and it actually bred this year. This is a male fire pied, beautiful snake. And I just thought it was kind of interesting that this is the first one that I pulled. It's one of my really, really nice, kind of a high-end snake that I bought a couple years ago. <laughs> it turned out to be a really nice breeder. So anyway, it looks like the way he set this up is he put the deli cup inside of a bag and I'm pretty sure that uh, it's required that you put it in a bag. So if you use a deli cup, I'm almost 100% sure it's required by law that you have a snake bag. And some people will just kind of tie the string and then and kind of wrap it like this and tie it. Some people actually use... Um, like a zip tie to tie it, and some people use like metal ties, but you definitely want them in a bag. And it's it's kind of nice to keep all this material because as you're getting snakes and later on down the road, if you decide to sell and ship, you have all the packing material right here. And it looks like you used a little bit of shredded paper on the bottom. And that is how Justin Kobelka sent me a snake. <laughs> it was, it was, that was a couple. That was a long time ago. I haven't actually bought any snakes for a couple years, so it's been quite a while since I actually got this. So essentially, all these boxes are pretty much the same. There's a lot of different stores on the internet uh, uh, on the internet that will actually specialize in shipping snakes. It's like reptiles to you and different uh, stores like that. You can actually buy the boxes separate. You can you can actually make your own boxes. I've seen that where people will actually. Um, make their own boxes. So this is this one's kind of interesting. It looks like this was uh, this is a normal female <laughs> Python Regis and this is this is really really what you really need in this is you need more packing material. So you need a snake in a bag, you need it secured and you need the packing material. So this is probably one of the biggest mistakes 
right here. Just take, take a look at this. This is a heat pack, and you never really want the heat packs on the side of the, the enclosure here. What you really want to do is you want to put the heat pack underneath on the lid because the number one cause of deaths in snake shipments is that they get too hot. And speaking of heat packs, you really want a reptile heat pack. You don't want one like just a hand warmer that you buy at Walmart. You want a specific heat pack that you can actually, has a different temperature range just for reptiles. So if we kind of go through some of these, I'm not gonna actually tell you who actually sent this. This is pretty cool what to do if your box is cold. It kind of has a, a little uh, instruction sheet, which is really nice, nice touch. This one actually had newspaper, and it looks like I had two snakes shipped at the same time. Oh, these are my desert ghosts. <laughs> yeah, I got both desert ghosts at the same time. Use a little newspaper on the bottom, some absorbent material. This is very nice. Bring back, brings back memories. <laughs> I've actually, I've actually looked at these boxes. I had to dig them out from, from underneath my uh, stairs because I haven't even looked at these boxes for a long time. So this one, here's another one. They used a really big snake bag, and then some newspaper, and some shredded paper. Lots of absorbent material, which is really nice. And some of these came with instructions, some of them came with the breeding, some of them didn't. And personally, it doesn't really matter to me if they come with you know, any information at all. I don't really need that much information as far as uh, what, <laughs> I'm gonna take a look at this one. This, is, this has a lot of, it. this is almost overkill the amount of information. This one has um, uh, all, medium rat, medium rat, small rat, medium rat, small rat. The date they were fed, <laughs> it's pretty incredible. And uh, it's, 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 it's all the, pretty much the activity of this female lemon blast, one that I bought online. This is actually Metal Monkey Exotics. Paid $300, $380. <laughs> and then this one is, um, has a lot of this is actually what I prefer I prefer like a zip tie kind of an enclosure because it's a lot more secure you have to actually cut it with like a wire clippers and then this is what I prefer too because it doesn't really compact permanently like newspaper and it gives a lot better padding so personally I would rather use kind of this um, this I guess they use it like a filling for pillows this is a real nice touch with all the info on here so you can see there's a whole bunch of different ways people actually uh, package up their reptiles. All right, so take a look at this one. This was actually, I think this is the, the box that I got my two 100% head caramel albinos and both of them were, I think one was 5,000 grams, the other one was like 3,500 to 4,000 grams, really big snakes. And this actually came in a really big box, really well packaged and came with some snake bags. So this is like, kind of like butcher paper. And again, you know, butcher paper looks like it's okay, but I would actually prefer to do more like of the pillow stuffing kind of a, kind of a packing material. Here's another one. You zoom up on this one a little bit so you can get a good look. Let's see how this guy packed it. He packed it in a snake bag with some little, this, this stuff looks really good. Like it actually will keep the, it's form, it won't really pack in to where you're not, um, don't have enough packing material in there. That's kind of what happened to my big snake that got really mean. He actually had like a bunch of newspaper around and all the newspaper got compacted in one corner and he was actually just kind of bouncing around in the box, which is definitely not good. He was not a happy snake, let me tell you. Here's another one, you have newspaper. It seems like newspaper is pretty common. And a little snake bag, you can see this one actually got soiled, so it's always good to have a little extra packing material in there. I definitely would not reuse a snake bag that got soiled. I'd just throw it away and buy another one. You can get snake bags pretty much anywhere. You can get them at a lot of your local reptile shows. 
See, now this one is perfect. It has a heat pack underneath. As a matter of fact, you can put cool packs under here too. Depending on the temperature, if it's really cold out, you put a heat pack. If it's in the middle of the summer, you're shipping to somewhere where it's 100 degrees. Sometimes you can actually put a cold pack in there to make sure your snake doesn't overheat. And this one came in a pillowcase. <laughs> this guy used uh, just a big pillowcase and crammed it in there. And the pillowcase, actually, that's like a snake bag and the padding all in one. So this is this is probably, you know, this is a really good setup for a little snake. If you have extra pillowcases laying around, <laughs> you want to save yourself the cost of a snake bag. So let's take a look at this one. This came in just a little cup in a box. I would definitely recommend putting this in a snake bag. I'm pretty sure if you go to a lot of these websites, they'll say you definitely need a snake bag as well as the deli cup's optional, but you can put, you definitely need the snake bag. Here's another one. Going through all these, there's quite a few different ones here. This one, let's see what it was from a long, long time ago. Uh, This was from Vesper Ball Pythons. I can't even remember what snake this was. But he used some paper in here and a little deli cup. Pretty much the same as the last one. The last one looks like it was maybe from Vesper Ball Pythons as well. All right, so take a look at this. This is just a regular FedEx box. This is really not compliant. <laughs> Did I really get a snake in here? Yeah, so. Uh, essentially this right here was supposed to be listed on the outside of the box. You're supposed to have live, non-venomous, harmless reptile. You're also supposed to have uh, the information as far as uh, the, if, that it's a ball python and everything. This is from Ship Your Reptiles. So this is from the reptile shipping company. So um, yeah, let's see what else is in here. So this is actually... Um, two little deli cups, and they probably were both in this snake bag with this packing here, and it looks like there's a bunch of newspaper in there too. So the newspaper, this is really the best way to do it, put them individually in the little uh, plastic containers, and, and make sure you have holes in the plastic containers. These actually need breathing holes, so it's actually designed for reptiles. Then you put them in a snake bag in the container with a lot of boxing. And what I would have done is I would have definitely put this on the outside somewhere. I'm pretty sure that is by law you're supposed to put live animal and put it on the outside of the box. And it seems like these perishable boxes are pretty much universal. And a lot of these are supposed to have um, live non-venomous striptiles on the outside. This was from Constriction Addiction. Let's take a look at this one. This is a huge snake bag. That's almost as big as a pillowcase there. And then you have a lot of packing material. Shredded paper seems to be a really good packing material that a lot of people use. That one's really good. Let's see what else we have here. This one, keep at room temperature. That is good to put on there. But it should say uh, something about a uh, live animal on there. This one did not have enough packing material unless I took it out. This is, boy, I can't believe I still have receipts in here. <laughs> I can take a look at and see what I actually have. This was from my albino. Oh wow, I paid uh, 500 bucks for that albino. <laughs> she, she paid off really well. She actually laid a big clutch of eggs last year. I was selling all the babies for 250. <laughs> so I definitely definitely made my money off, off of that one. That was a good investment. She's looking really good gonna breed again this year. This one, let's take a look at this. This is another one. Look, there's a label on the top. This one says, Live harmless snake. That is exactly what you should be marking on the top of your box. Live harmless reptile. This one actually had two of them in there. Really big snake bags again. 
and uh, lots of packing material. So this looks this looks really nice. I like the newspaper, really thick layers of newspaper in here. Looks like it would contain any messes if it actually made a mess in the box. All right, so I have four more boxes left. This one is, uh, let's see. Ball Python, Python Regis, non-venomous, live, harmless reptile. That is what you need. If you don't have a label, you can just write it on the top. I'm pretty sure that is by law. You need that information at a minimum. These, everyone pretty much uses these perishable. Looks like they're getting these boxes from sh Superior Shipping Supplies. So if you're looking for the boxes, you can also get them through Ship Your Reptiles or other places like that. <laughs> this is pretty nice. It has a little uh, door thing. If you're in a hotel room, do not disturb. <laughs> that is awesome from Breeder Circle. And little things like that kind of make you stand out. I really like little uh, little things like that. And here are some, this is kind of cool. Looks like it has some feeding cards. It has a little information cards that they gave you. And keep track of your ball pythons. I don't keep track of, you know, hardly anything. <laughs> I keep track of my breeding and and the parents, and that is about it. Here's some business cards, breeder circle, and they actually put the heat pack on the side. I would not recommend putting it on the side. And you know, if you do, I'd probably put some insulation up against it. Put your snake over on the other side. You definitely don't want your snake up against that heat pack. And it really depends if, if you put it on the top and it's right up against the snake, you know, if there's not enough room in there, you might be forced to put it on the side. It really, really just depends. Here's another one. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> Here's a little one. Ball Python Regis Quantity 1. <laughs> uh, got it on the other side. I would definitely write it bigger so people definitely know what's in there. This is a good one. Look at that. Two heat packs. Must have been some cold weather when that one was shipped. This is a nice touch. Take a look at this. This is Bailey and Bailey Reptiles. Wow. It looks like uh, like something from a fancy restaurant. <laughs> it's got a nice little pen in there. Uh, yeah, I, I actually haven't used the pen from these guys yet, but <laughs> that was kind of a nice touch. And let's see what ball python I got and how much it was. This was actually uh, a pinstripe pie, my pin pie. Wow, I paid $632 for the pin pie <laughs> with shipping. Of course, the shipping is like 50 bucks. This is packed really well. It has a bag, it says exactly what's in the bag. This is kind of nice too. It has a little absorbent material in the bag. You might think about putting a paper towel in there, having some some shredded paper. So it's always interesting to see what people are offering with the little kind of extras they give, what kind of packing material they use, how they're labeling their boxes. It's pretty interesting. I have two more boxes here. This one, Live Harmless Reptile. You definitely want that on there. And some people, they pop little holes in the boxes. Some people, don't at all. I'm not really sure if you need it or not. There's a lot of them that's that are shipped without holes. That one just has one hole and really a lot of people they'll kind of put the hole all the way through the styrofoam and the side just to make sure that they breathe. This one's kind of interesting as they used this uh, uh, popcorn styrofoam and let's take a look at what this one was. This one was my jungle woman spider. Awesome, and I got him from Haven's Reptiles. That's awesome. That was a big snake, by the way. <laughs> and she actually produced, made some really cool stuff. I'm breeding her again. Uh, next year, she's actually got the year off. So it came in a nice big snake bag. Lots of popcorn in here. That's the first time I've actually seen the popcorn in one of these boxes. All right, let's take a look at the last box here. This one has a little little writing here, Live Harmless Reptiles, very nice. You should actually put that it is a ball python in there as well. So let's take a look at this. This is, it looks like they, uh, uh, looks like they have the birth date on there. 
and looks like they put uh, this in a bag, a really big snake bag. So it was a, a little Tupperware thing. Well, it's not really, not really Tupperware. It's got the little holes. It's definitely four reptiles. It's got the little tiny air hole in there. You put it in the snake bag and lots of packing material. They kind of used a whole hodgepodge in this one. And this actually it looks like uh, it might have fallen off maybe from the lid. I'm guessing, you know, probably the, the I'd say the proper place to put these really is up under the lid. And that is pretty much it for the packing materials. Okay, so here is one more piece of advice. I would definitely not ship your snakes directly to your place of residence because in the last leg of the trip is when they really get beat up. So what I did is I actually shipped the snake to the FedEx Ship Center at, uh, in Littleton, Colorado, which is probably about an hour drive away. So what I do is I just find the ship center, put it in your name, in, in my name too, and then just use the address of the ship center and just and just uh, have instructions. Uh, and when you're making the label, hold at ship center for pickup. And then you'll just come in. And then the other thing you definitely want to make sure is that wherever you ship to the FedEx center, they actually accept snakes. <laughs> There's no one there that will just you know, terrify the snakes or some would just uh, will outright not accept snakes. You have to make sure that the shipping and the receiving on both ends will actually accept and receive snakes. Okay, so those are my ball python shipping boxes that I received all my snakes from pretty much to build my entire collection. You know, when I'm showcasing my snakes, this is where all my snakes came from. Came from all these places on the internet. And the other, probably the biggest advantage of getting snakes shipped in is you can go to your local reptile shows kind of look at what everybody's doing and then you can get something shipped in from across the country that nobody has at the shows and you can bring in kind of you know a new morph to the market and that's kind of what I did with the bamboo there's a I kind of did a lot of research before I started producing a lot of bamboos nobody at my local shows really knew what the bamboo was all about and I started breeding them as I probably sold dozens of bamboos and bamboo combos and people were really floored and they sold really well and I think that is is the other advantage of shipping because you can get stuff in your local market that's not normally there and really you're not competing with the table across from you as far as you know if you went to a local reptile show and you bought a whole bunch of snakes from somebody and then started breeding them what you're really doing is you're competing with other people at the show. And that's another good thing about shipping too. So if I go to the show next year and everyone has bamboo stuff that I've been producing that you know they're kind of competing with me, what I could actually do is I could start selling on Morph Market and shipping them out to all different local markets so I'm not really competing against the guys at the shows. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.